Hey yo, this one hurts. This one hurts. This one hurts. It hurts so bad. So I know uh, on Friday we discussed briefly how, you know, language is important. What you say out your mouth is real. And before that man hit the gurney, y'all was already putting him in the grave. And I, I posted it. Not many people agreed with me, but I truly believe that we we killed DMX on so many levels. We killed him. Um, Russell Simmons came out and said that he saved Def Jam, but Def Jam failed to save him. Um, Master P came out and said that we need to have an artist union. So that way, good rising, good rising. So that way that artists had some, some support and somewhere to go when they needed some help. And it's not just the drugs, it's the finances, it's the women, it's the cars, it's, it's the whole lifestyle that needs to be addressed. But this one, it really does hurt and hits hard. So I know many people's favorite rappers have always been the Jay-Z's, the Biggie's, the Nas. Nas was my boo. (laughs) Don't get it twisted. Nas still my boo. But I didn't, Jay, Jay was amazing. But for me, it was DMX. It was DMX authenticity. It was his rawness. It was everything like I'm going to just bear my entire soul and you could take it and leave it. And as the radio rebel, you already know that's how I conduct myself. And that is not new. It's always how I conducted myself. So I identified more with the DMX than I did of the Jay-Z or the Nas or the Biggie. And so I, I hurt like many of us, we hurt good rising, good rising. And, um, it hurts. I remember I cried like a baby when Tupac died. I cried like a baby when Biggie died. And this one, I I shed tears, but I was more relieved because I understood. You know, DMX was here and he spent a lot of time here in Boston. He spent a lot of time in New Hampshire because that's where the um, rehab was out in New Hampshire. And so I, I just I, I wanted him to live the life that he'd been begging all of us to help him live. Like he wanted to be clean. He he was on, was how do you say the girl name? Ivana Venzant, Ayana, Ayan, I, I can never say her name. Yeah, like fix my life. Like he has always wanted to do right by his life and do right by his kids. And like it, any interaction that he's ever had with anyone, he ha- he's he has a heart of gold. And so I'm sad, I'm so sad. <laughs> But I'm happy at the same time because I'm glad he's in a place in a space where addiction doesn't exist. And so I was unaware until I watched the video of um, uh, the interview he did about, I think it was on Funk Flex interview. And he was talking about how his big man or his older man put him, you know, rolled him a blunt. He's over here smoking a blunt and it was laced. And so he'd been addicted from being a youngin, and it wasn't even his fault. It wasn't even a choice. Um, but as much as he battled and fought and like, that one hurts, but I just, I, I personally, I really think that I want to believe that we could have saved him had we been sending him hope and love and healing instead of posting RIPs. (laughs) <laughs> before the man was even dead. So that's my own personal opinion. You don't have to agree with it, but I, that's what I stand by. Our words are extremely important and everything that we come out of our mouth and everything that we think about and everything that we allow our imagination to create, like the universe is listening. The universe does not understand you being sarcastic or you whatever. So Wusa reset. Woo! Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre. Waking up with Taylor Andre has absolutely nothing to do with the time of day we link up, but about waking up your third eye with unorthodox conversations leading to universal consciousness. We got Justin Springer in the building. What's going on, Justin? I'm just listening to you. You know, um, 
when I walked in, I felt a vibe because what's we, the vibe, Justin? We were playing uh, some some records that I haven't heard from X in a long time. You know those mixtape cuts. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, mm-hmm. it really brought me back. You know, to my college days, even my high school days. You know, so. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't know if we could have saved him. You know what I mean? Um, you don't think so? I think I think of, even when he was going through his his um his battles, mm-hmm. I think he had a. He, he still had a, a lot of people that loved him. You know what I mean? Now, I think there are certain people that he has made wealthy. Um, I agree with what Master P is saying, and I just wish um, that conversation should have happened maybe years ago. Uh, years ago. Where years. I don't, you know, it shouldn't have, have to wait till, you know, so many uh, misfortunes, you know, with musicians and with. Um, public figures you know what i mean like or just people in our neighborhood you know what i mean it's not just you know the ones that we look up to it's the guy next door that's struggling with trauma struggling with um addiction struggling um and addiction can go in any type of way you know sometimes addiction could be sexual addiction it's still it ain't good you know what i mean so um but yeah x was um i don't know i don't i don't think there'll ever be anyone like that you know, that could reach so many people, you know. The way Um, that he did. Yeah, we were talking about that off air, about how he just, he went across the aisle and brought everybody to the table. Right. And it's crazy because, you know, um, it's it's just kind of, it's kind of sad that like, you don't really, even ourselves, we got to be honest, like, we don't really honor people until they're gone sometimes. You know what I mean? So I, I'm trying to practice giving flowers mm. every day. While you're here. To, to, to just anybody, you know what I mean? That deserves them, you know? And so, but, but, but you know, you know, when he, when he passed, you know, it, it, it really brought me to a space where I started listening to more of his music mm-hmm. and it kind of, I don't know, I kind of got re-energized because I was a kind of during my youth, you know what I mean? So, um, he's gonna live through all of us, you know what I mean? That man's a legend. Um, you said that before too. That he's gonna live through all of us. Oh, he I mean he is. I mean, I mean, as I said when I walked in, the vibe was already set. You had DMX playing, you know what I mean? Like he's he's gonna live through all of us. You can go back. His music is gonna be like a, a lot of people's Bible, you know what I mean? Not always his music was, you know. It was it was really his um, diary, you know what I mean, and, and a lot of it. And we just lived it. It was filled with darkness. A lot of it was filled with light. And I think you can learn from both. You know what I mean? Like, how do you get out the dark? You know what I mean? How do you get out the light? I mean, how do you stay within the light? You know what I mean? And, you um, real mellow right now, Justin. You like real chill. Um, Wait, you mad? You be mad hype? So I don't understand. Oh uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. That's. I, I don't know. D- different moods, different times of days, I guess. Just like with music, like, I don't even know who's my top five. It's kind of like, depending on what my mood is, you know what I mean? But DMX, I would say, like, he's probably the most, probably, I'm probably the most connected. I'm not going to say he's my favorite artist, but I was probably the most connected to him mm-hmm. because he shared his trauma, he shared mm-hmm. his pain. And I think that can uh, relate to anybody you know what i mean that's why he can go to woodstock and kill it you know what i mean <laughs> have, have everybody wrote, you know you know that was a time that was history right there you know what i mean and i was just watching um i i i, I saw i listened to the podcast like a month ago but they put it on youtube too so i got to to see him on the drink champs and he was talking about that was his favorite one of his favorite moments on stages you know what i mean and when you watch the video you you can't help but watch his eyes you watch his eyes and he's just like oh my god you know what i mean but like that excitement like just seeing his eyes and like just you know like how far he's come in life you know what i mean like that just means like anybody can uh can be on you know record slipping you know what i mean That, that that record was like my go-to, like when I was lit. I don't know how many times I f- I fell. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, recently, you know what I mean? And like that was a, that's one of the records. That's not saying that's the only record, but that's one of the records mm-hmm. that really hit that I go to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's always going. He's always going to live through us. Yeah. When somebody you know? uh, posted the the meme of like Obama, Trump, DMX, and showed like. 
the crowd, the uh, crowd of Obama's inauguration, uh, the crowd of Trump's inauguration, <laughs> and then DMX that. at Woodstock. Like it was just like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he won, he won, he won, yeah. absolutely. Um, the the vibes in Florida. I think somebody posted in Florida. The vibes is all the way live. People were. The police came out, but somebody had, you know, the Dominican style speakers was playing the music. Oh, and yeah. Everybody I was just. That. Yeah, I've kind of, sometimes I kind of like, even though I'm on social media, I kind of like. Don't be on social yeah, media. Yeah, I, I got to take breaks, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's that's beautiful to see, like, you know what I mean? And even just driving around in Boston, like, you, it's just a beautiful thing when you got your window down and yes. you, you hear somebody else playing DMX and then you kind of want to turn yours up a little bit more. But yeah, that's, you know, that's going to, I don't think, I don't, his music's going to live on, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I even seen like DJ Mott, I think he's up in here too, Spark. DJ Mott uh, had his baby girl bumping, <laughs> you know what I mean? I think. I don't know what the record was. It might have been um, Cash Money Hoes. I don't know, but it was one of those records. <laughs> <laughs> one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, absolutely right. And so one of the comments is that, like, all the billionaires are not one hip-hop private doctor that X could have been safe with. Um, oh, no yeah. support for struggling and ailing artists. Where's the love? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> where's the love in hip-hop? Which is a great question. Yeah. Uh, X was definitely the definition of the term fisher of men um, right right I, I i love him we all love him we gonna miss him but you're right like a, a, every time you play a record he's there it's like Man, the michael jackson's and the prince and the yo, dmx you can't tell me that when he goes when he does that growl like come on man that just that is just yo that's 24 just, hold on it, i want to hear yeah, that 24 yeah, look, hours delivery of craig yeah okay but he said that even if I died today, he's happy. He, I, you know, I'm good. I'm good. And so, where's that 24 hours to live when X comes? Like that, that will forever probably be my favorite DMX verse. And I don't, I don't think he was trying to like end his life. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. You know, no, no. He had so much to live for. Yo, you know, so you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist, right? The oh, yeah, family yeah, yeah. came out and said it had nothing to do with drugs. He got uh, the COVID vaccine shot days before he yeah, had the heart attack. I heard about that. I heard about so, that. So y'all already know. I'm like, yep, it was COVID. <laughs> it was the shot. The well, shot that they gave him did it. Well, it had you, nothing to do with drugs. Well, the know, gate. Forget all of his his history with drugs. Right. But um, is that Black Rob too? Yeah. He's, yeah. he's he's in a he's in a he's in a tough situation too. We gotta pray for him too. What's going on? I didn't know. Black Rob, he's in a hospital too. I did put me on. What happened? Yeah, I mean, um, he's been dealing with um, I'm not sure exactly, you know, this is this just really ties into why we why hip hop needs a union, you know what I mean, or some sort of you know, st st structure, you know, the, to support artists, mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. especially an artist like Black Rob, who's been getting, I, I can't cuss, but who's been getting um, robbed, really. He, you know, he he comes from being a robber from the streets, but, you know, he got robbed in that industry. There's people that are still making millions of dollars off, off, of off, off whoa. Well, if you take a look at all of the artists that been in the game, all of them were raped. That's right. why um, Puffy was out here like, you need to pay black creators. I and they were like, yo, how admit, about yeah. you pay black creators? And right. then come back and talk to us. He just recently came at some some other corporation too. And it's just like, yo, like, like do the right thing. Yourself. I understand what you're trying to do, but like you're not the one to be speaking, you know what I mean, with your history. You know what I mean? The hypocrisy. But yeah, you got black Rob laying in a hospital, like instead of so instead of whatever Diddy, Sean Combs, and I respect his, you know, his you know his hustle and everything i'm not trying to be disrespectful but like instead of like trying to like put yourself on a on a pedestal mm -hmm. and try to go after this corporation mm -hmm. just recently you should be you know with dj self who went to go see black rob and and, and film him i think it was dj Self. he, he should have been at the hospital Egypt, right dj self um maybe i i don't know all the yeah. <laughs> i don't watch the, the, the gossip stuff but no it's not gossip like uh, i think it's on a show or something no you, so egypt off of hgtv 
Egypt is a person? Like, yes, oh. Egypt is a person. She okay. does, like, she's in real estate on HGTV. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe. Is that the same DJ Self that you're talking about? Probably, yeah, because DJ Self is, like, you know, he was a pretty big radio DJ, and um, um, he, um, you know, he's from New York. I think he's from New York. But uh, but he was the one I went to go see X and, and, and to, 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 to let the world know his situation. And, and mm-hmm. he don't look good, man. He, I think he just had a stroke. But he was actually giving love to DMX because mm-hmm. this was before X passed. I think he's still in the hospital. But like well, as I was saying, Diddy should instead of putting out these tweets or whatever he was doing, he should have been at that hospital bed. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's that's real success. You know what I mean? Like I don't. You know this man. He he is very successful, but ain't nobody gonna remember all those millions of dollars. But they will remember if he went and, and helped out that man, Black Rob. You know mm. what I mean? That's the way it should be. You know what I mean? And like Russell, I don't know if Russell is coming out. Oh my god. You see it now? Yeah, it's bad. Oh my So when you god. played that video, I thought of I, I, I thought you knew. Yo, no. I'm gonna yeah. yo. So you wanna play that record now? Or I mean go ahead. Yeah, go I'm ahead, absolutely yo, Justin. Yeah, it's crazy. So we gonna go ahead and play this real quick. Without reading, but I'ma send you there first. And with the curse, you doing? I'ma send you there first. I've been living with a curse, and now it's all about to end. But I'm trying to go and say hello to my little friend. But I got to make it right, reconcile with my mother. Trying to explain to my son, to my girl, my lover. She pulled one little coat, snatch up my dog. Turn like three billows of water, feet into a fog. Out with the bang, you will remember my name. I wanted to live forever, but this was a thing. You had 24 hours. Oh, okay, okay. We did it. So I went ahead and I pulled up um the video of Black Rob and my my heart hurts for this. Like I this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. For me, like I don't even know what's going on with him. he was saying about the union yes and so it's not the same dj self that i i was thinking of it wasn't the same wow okay well this is this ain't even what you can't hey daddy we talking about dmx we shout out to my daddy justin say hi to my daddy my real daddy (laughs) eric you got a whole camera all to yourself Oh, thank you, Justin. Yo, my heart really hurts about this whole thing. Yo, if you ask my daddy, you got some um, you got some pictures you can send me of what my room looked like back in the day. My daddy is a ward. No, I didn't know that. My daddy think he a comedian though. He got jokes in the form of honesty. When the FCC, you say it, Justin, the FCC came after me. <laughs> Tell the truth. I can take it. Yeah. Thank you. 
Yo, that was, I cried. I cried every day. I hated the FCC for that. I say. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you, Justin. No, not at all, not at all. So we, you know. Justin's volume's low. Justin's bass is low. Oh, yeah. Today. I talk real low. I need a microphone with me everywhere I go. <laughs> I'll try to speak up. Is this better? Is that better? It looked better on the volume. All right. I'll speak up. My bad. Okay. Thank you, Justin. And so we're going to go ahead and pay these bills when we come back. We're actually going to talk about what Justin came here for because uh, we've been in here just talking and keeping it real and being honest about our feelings and the situation that all of us are dealing with when it comes to DMX. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and jump into the real reason why you're here. Oh, yeah. I don't even know why. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm just happy to come, you know. Oh, exactly. There we go. All right. They said that your, your mic sound nice, so we're good to go now. All right. Let's go. All right. Let's, let's pay go these ahead bills. and pay these bills and we'll be right back. All right. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 Are you tired of renting and need more of your own space? Are you getting stressful letters or calls from the bank? Does your home require expensive repairs and you just don't have the funds to fix them? Regardless of whether you want to buy or sell, Taylor Andre of Thumbprint Realty is here to help. From saving your home from foreclosure to walking you through the process of becoming the first-time homeowner, Taylor makes real estate easy. With your best interests at heart, knowledge of the market, and a passion for people, Taylor is dedicated and motivated to serve you. Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre, and I am determined and dedicated in assisting you in all of your real estate needs. Give me a call at 617-459-0041. Again, that number is 617-459-0041. Or you can email me at T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E at thumbprintrealty.com. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Hey, am. Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Learn more at underagedrinking.samsa.gov. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. FM. You know, it's, it's, y'all heard Jay-Z talk about No, I show? listen, I stay in my lane. I know who I am and who I am not. And I don't know Basquat. Basquiat. Maybe we'll start. Well, the name of the show is Writing the Future. So Writing the Future. We'll just yeah, stay there. Well, yeah, I'll get into the Basquiat <laughs> stuff. Okay, so tell me more. Okay, so for those who don't know, I'm over here mispronouncing people's names as I typically do. I'm not trying to though. I'm trying to no, say okay. it again, Justin. Well, his his last name is Basquiat. Basquiat. Yeah, Haitian Basquiat. Fra- Basquiat. He's still alive? No, he unfortunately um he passed away. Um just just like what we're talking about. He of uh, drugs, drug overdose. Basquiat. In the eighty I think it was in the eighties. In the eighties. Okay, so or, tell or me about 90s. Basquiat, because I am I'm ignorant, but I see everybody with the t shirts and with the hoodies. Oh uh, yeah. And it's it's to the point where, like, you can go to TJ Maxx and get a Basquiat. Yeah, you don't want to do that though. But um, no, that's no. Nah, his crown is uh is, is definitely um a signature um 
really a signature um, essence of his work. You know what I mean? So if you think about the graffiti, the graffiti era, the beginning of hip hop, you know, in the eighties, um, that was Basquiat's time, New York city. You know what I mean? So Basquiat went from coming from immigrant parents, mom being from Puerto Rico, father being from Haiti. Um, and just one of the most, I would say one of the biggest hustlers, I would say, when I mean hustler, I mean just work hard, work ethic. You know what I mean? John Michel. John, yeah, you got that one right. I got yeah, that yeah, one yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Basquiat, um, we'll talk about the expedition, but just a little bit about him. I mean, he just he went from the graffiti world of, um, you know, his signature was uh, Samo, S A M O, and you would see that all over New York. And he had a collective. He had a crew. You know what I mean? Like oh. Seen so him like before, okay. Yeah, so you know Fab Five Freddy. Yes, you know? yes. So Fab yes. Five Freddy, before people knew who he was, he he was an artist. And in in, in Basquiat, the Keith Herons, uh, the Lady Pinks, um, they were all in a crew. And this was, you know, when uh, when hip hop was coming to from uptown to downtown. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, you know, they threw a lot of parties. You know what I mean? They had like their own little in crowd. Um, and then until Basquiat connected with Andy Warhol, Andy Warhol um, at that time and and now he is, was considered one of the best one of the best painters, contemporary artists. Mm -hmm. And so once they hooked up, you know, kind of Basquiat's name kind of really went to the next level. But you know, at that time he wasn't he was he was he was very you know very popular, but people didn't really the world didn't really appreciate his work until years after his death. You know what I mean? Like most of yeah. most of our... His artwork is some of the most... Um, hot, um, I don't know. This know. is an 88. Yeah. But I would say like some of his work is millions of dollars. Um, you know what I mean? If you look at um, even just recently, the Brooklyn Nets have like a Basquiat the Basquiat crown and they have the, their uniforms is Basquiat inspired. So, you know, when we're talking about um, DMX lives through us, Basquiat, his, his art, when legends leave a legacy behind that could be remembered when he you're not so here. He was so young. When did he die? I want to say early nineties. $31 million for the robot looking one. Oh yeah. Oh Yeah. I'm still learning more about him. You know what I mean? I knew about him before I took this opportunity uh, to, because um, now his expedition, as you, the flyer that you were having, mm -hmm. uh, is in Boston. You know, hopefully it's going to be extended, but as of right now, it's till May. Um, and we can, can we give out tickets? Yeah, we can. Um, we don't have dates, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell us what day you can go, because we'll figure that out at a later date. But I think, I mean, well, let's start with two right now, but I mean, what, or maybe four, but they don't have to. Maybe they could just be four. You can go to the show by yourself. You don't need to, you know, have a guest. But if you, you know, whatever you want to distribute them, we can do that. Um, but um, but the show, I mean, I, I, we can go talk ever and ever about Basquiat. Um, if you do not know much about his work, there is a YouTube documentary called Radiant Child. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of like, you know, shares a little bit more of his essence, but um, but yeah, I mean, he was just unfortunately, yeah, he died young. He um, you know, as, as, as we all deal with mental mental health, could be, can mm -hmm. be you know, mm -hmm. imagine going from being homeless to having a penthouse, you know, in New York City. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times, you don't know how to. And this is on Amazon. What's that? The you can go on. It's it's on free on YouTube. It's free on YouTube. Yeah, you'll find it on YouTube for free. I don't know. If... Did he speak Spanish and Creole? I don't. I don't know. So, um, there is a, the interesting twist with his family <laughs> life is um his mother. So we're talking about mental health. Mm -hmm. His mother, um, and father, and I think his mother. I don't know if they divorced. But his mother um, 
um, was transferred to a mental health facility. She was an artist as well. Mm. Um, and so I don't know much about um, that situation, but it, it obviously triggered him because he actually moved out of his house at a young age, um, probably like around 17, 18, because his father, um, you know, they weren't getting along, you know, he wanted to, be, you know, wanted to be an artist. Um, but him and his father ended up becoming, you know, close again, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, once he became success successful. But, um, but yeah, man, I mean, you don't find too many brothers, you know what I mean, really, you know, lighting up the art world, the contemporary museums, you know what yeah. I mean? Imagine yeah, your, your, exactly. your work being in museums, you know what but I mean? But would we have given the man his flowers if he was still alive? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe with, who knows these days, everyone's getting canceled for things they've done. You know, it's a, it's a wild, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's a good question. Maybe mm. yeah, that's a good question. You know what I mean? Who knows wow. if he would still be inspired to be making art? You know what I mean? Who knows? But I think um, that was his that was his will. You know what I mean? Like, unfortunately, like he was supposed to live that time. You know what I mean? His work is going to live on forever. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's um, sad. That's sad. I'm trying to remember how I got put on to Bosque at the first time. I know first I, time? Well, I, think, I think I watched his movie. And I think that's how the documentary one. That's no, there's a, there's a movie with, um, what's the brother's name? That's a really great actor. Um, there's a movie about him. It may just be called Bosque. Um, or like he I, dried, died on a drug overdose in August 12th of 2000, um, of 1988 mm. at his great Jones street studio. He was 27 years old in the months Crazy. preceding his death. The trouble artist claimed, to be using a hundred bags of heroin a day? Crazy. That's 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 mental health. That's that's a problem. You know, I, I can't even imagine what that looked like a hundred bags. Yeah, he struggled a lot because there was times even when his work wasn't getting you know, mind you, he was famous at that time, but he became more famous mm -hmm. after his death. Not like when he died, but just like his work became more appreciated mm -hmm. um over time. But during his struggle with addiction, um, a lot of it came from just, as I say, we don't, you don't know how to like, look at a lot of young hip hop artists that come from not having a lot, you know what I mean? As far as um, financial, you know, stability. Mm -hmm. And then they, they're given million, millions of dollars. How, how are you going to act when you're 19, 20 years old? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who was talking? Um, I just brought this up uh, last week. It was uh, Anori, Nori. It was on Nori's Drink Champs. podcast. Is okay. that what it's called? I listened to it. So, yeah. Um, Drink Champs. Drink Champs. Drink Champs? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's why he kept telling the boy to drink. Yeah, Who they all did. Cameron. Cameron. Oh, I saw on it. Hand. I saw it. Yep. Yo, I saw that. Cameron was like, yo, you get these young boys a little bit of money, you don't know how to act. He's right. He's talking about Mace. Yeah. He's talking about Mace. Yeah. And like, he's right. But I mean, like, yo, like, I mean, I didn't get that from that interview. I mean, I'd be listening to watching boys walkings and stuff like that too. And like, he's, you know, a lot of times it's the, um, we don't have, um, even in my in my in, in my household growing up, um, we didn't have a good financial blueprint. You know what I mean. So if your parents don't have don't know how to save money mm -hmm. or even know anything what money, if, what people need to understand what really what money is. You know, it's a tool. It's not, you know. And so, um, if you don't have a good financial blueprint, when you get in that situation, you're gonna you're gonna lose all that money. Once you that big money comes in, you're gonna lose it. Then you're gonna get another another stack. You're gonna lose it again mm -hmm. until you understand how to use it. Exactly. You're gonna lose it until you know how to use it. Well, I'm I'm still learning right now, and I'm a, I'm I'm, I'm in my forties. Like, I'm afraid to I'm afraid to check. To be Are honest with you, it? yeah, yeah, I'm afraid to check right Let's now. Let's talk offline. We will, we will. Um, well, there's a difference between business and. Um, um, Your business credit through the roof. I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> you good in these streets, Justin. Yeah, I can. Um, but Equifax might be a different story, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, just 
things that could be fixed. It's not that crazy. You know what I, I mean? I got you. That's yeah, not yeah. Fine. It's just, and, and those are things that, you know, you don't really learn from a young age is mm -hmm. credit. Like, mm -hmm. that's everything. You know what I mean? And so. Yo, 65% of my clients right. are over 45 years old. Like, right. it really doesn't. Right. Not, I don't want to say register, but you move, you can move along this country and move right. from here to there without having to actually take a look at your credit until you are ready to have them grandbabies and yeah. build a foundation for them. And then you realize how much you truly don't know. Now we definitely got to talk. Cause I definitely, um, in this last year or so, I definitely, there's definitely a switch that went on in my life. Um, definitely during this pandemic. And I want, I definitely want to make sure my credit is where it needs to be and everyone around me too. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I can, I can be able to teach and, and spread that, that gospel too. But I, I want to, you know, take things to another level one day and want to be able to own property and, and develop, you know, um, or be part of development projects. Mm -hmm. um, if there's anything else left to develop in the city of Boston. Who says it was to be in Boston? Okay, now? Justin, I see you. <laughs> so with that being said, um, I think I can say it now, Basquiat. We're going to keep We're practicing. We're going to no, keep practicing. <laughs> You're getting better. I think you started it was biscuit or something. No, but, oh, don't do me uh, like that, Justin. It was, it was something like that. It was something like that. You got the video. But we're going to go ahead and pay these bills when we come back. we I'm going to get the correct pronunciation um, of the syllables, and we're going to say it right. Get it right. Get it tight. I am Taylor Andre in the studio with Justin Springer talking about the writing, the future, Basquiat. It, it, yeah. No, it's not. Just say it so I can say it right. In the hip hop generation, say it the yeah. right way. Right in the future, it's um, hip hop generation is the name of the, the exhibit, but it's really um, an exhibit of Basquiat and his collection of friends. So it's not just all Basquiat's work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're gonna hook. We're gonna we're gonna get you there. We're gonna <laughs> get you there. I can't explain the experience, but it, it literally brings you back thirty years in time. It really it made you feel like you're back in the 80s uh, yeah that's what i'm trying to go yeah. to because i don't want to be but even though you're in that space it's still relevant to today to the um, right isn't that crazy it's just a recycle it's really not crazy because it yeah I mean, every, God said, ain't nothing he, new under he's the talking about gentrification in the 70s and 80s what's going on now gentrification you know capitalism you know all the everything in his 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 work was all like you know what he was you know, what was his lens on, on what was going on in America or mm -hmm. in society? You know what I mean? Like, and I think, um, you know, you can't say like, oh, he was a druggie. Nah, he, that was his addiction. That's what he went to to heal his pain. He wasn't healed. You know, even though he was doing well, you know, as an artist, he still had this pain. Maybe that pain was still all the way back to his mom, you know, being, who wants to be separated from your mother? Yeah. When that and she was dealing with her mental health, so maybe it was something, um, you know, in the family, you yeah, know, genetic. family tree, genetic. Yeah. And I wondered, was he ever able to see her? That like, did he, did she die prior to him like growing up? I'm so I sure. don't know his story. So I'm, yeah. I don't have much time to watch television, but I think I'm gonna like put it on and have. I don't watch. I don't watch noise. television either. But if it's a straight documentary, I'm all in. You know what I mean? Is so it like, a straight documentary? There's a bunch of things. We'll, I'm gonna help you out. You we'll, got we'll, me. We'll do a Basquiat so, okay, night or something. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like this, Justin. I like this. I am Taylor Andre waking up with Taylor Andre has absolutely nothing to do with the time of day we link up, but about waking up your third eye with unorthodox conversations leading to universal consciousness. We got Justin in the building. Uh, so much to talk about with Justin. He's gonna be with us until one. But let's pay these bills, and we'll be right back. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Hey, uh, remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Learn more at underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Are you tired of renting and need more of your own space? 
Are you getting stressful letters and calls from the bank? Does your home require expensive repairs and you just don't have the funds to fix them? Regardless of whether you want to buy or sell, Taylor Andre of Thumbprint Realty is here to help. From saving your home from foreclosure to walking you through the process of becoming a first-time homeowner, Taylor makes real estate easy. With your best interests at heart, knowledge of the market, and a passion for people, Taylor is dedicated and motivated to serve you. Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre, and I am determined and dedicated in assisting you in all of your real estate needs. Give me a call at 617-459-0041. Again, that number is 617-459-0041. Or you can email me at T-A-Y-L-A. A-N-D-R-E at thumbprintrealty.com. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 <laughs> so my daddy called because he went ahead and sent me a video from my childhood. And in this video, it has what Taylor Andre's room used to look like. How, like 16, 15, 16? 15, 14, yeah, yeah, about that. <laughs> yeah. It, should, it should say the year on me somewhere. But I don't think they'll be able to see it for real, for real. I did do a screenshot of one of the top pictures that I called from the screenshot. I know, I saw that. I'm going to let them, I'm going to let them see it, Daddy. <laughs> Y'all remember y'all used to hang posters up on your room? My daddy over here exposing me. I had all the boy groups, <laughs> all the boy bands. Who's that? Jaru? <laughs> Every that's Jay-Z. There's a oh, that was like the Nas corner. Nas had his own question. That was my that was your little mur- your mural. Was my boo. That's your mural right there. Today. That's, that's just you expressing yourself. It was. I these kids today have no idea what it's like to paint posters on your wall. That looks like some graffiti already. Uh you got- Daddy, why are you getting Elmo? <laughs> All types of exposed. I am exposed. Thank you, Daddy. Yo, I had candles for mad long. Y'all see that DMX corner over there? Yes. Yes. Yep. Who's that, Tupac? No, this is the whole DMX corner. The oh, corner okay, is okay. DMX. Different lyrics, different everything. Like He had some Tupac in him, too. No, no. Well, I, I Tupac had a corner, too. but. Oh, okay, okay. They were both. Yeah. So that plays. blood of my blood, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, that used to scare my baby sister. Like she used to hate it. Nana, tell her to take it down. Nah, it never came down. Dad, Daddy, this is real history right here. <laughs> this is real history. I don't think many people still have like any type of yeah exactly So, Daddy, I think you will appreciate. So, Justin Springer, who is currently in the building right now, has. Um, How you doing, boss? So, Justin is the co-owner of Rhythm and Raps, which is my favorite. I said it wrong. No, you good there. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, which is my favorite vegan spot. And on the, one of the walls, they have a complete. Um, it's a mirror of vinyl. Uh, it's not well, vinyl. Well, 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 kept, well, and I, well, you're talking about our bathroom. We do, yeah. No, uh, in the when you walk in. On yeah, you're talking. Right well, you're talking side, about you're talking about our mirror of tapes as well. Yeah, yeah the mirror of tapes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I was mad. thinking vinyl because we did have vinyl up too. Oh, you did. Yeah. I'm mad because I don't have. I didn't keep all my tape covers like yeah that's that's my partner aaron's 
That's all, his? Yeah, that's all his collection of tapes. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I threw tapes out once CDs came in. Yeah, I did. But vinyl, you never throw away. Master P, Montel Jordan's. I had Montel Jordan's uh, tape cover, and I had Master P sign the portion of him and Montel Jordan. Oh, wow. this is in Boston? Yeah. No, no, no. We were in California. Oh, wow, wow. California at LAX. Yeah. Wow. And he was like, Daddy, look at that guy over there. And yeah. I'm looking at him. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy, for breaking the ice. <laughs> oh shoot, Daddy! You know what? I completely forgot about this. The entire closet door had nothing but words. That's what I was looking at. It looked like a Keith Herring. No. Yeah. My daddy, yo, I love the fact that you crazy like I'm crazy. I, <laughs> I love the fact that you're a weirdo like me. I would have never got all this. Man. You're expressing yourself. Yeah, hold on. Here come the door, and the door have nothing but like words after words. Yeah, my boy did the same thing. Avrix? Did I really have Avrix on the damn door? My Avrix was the, you know. Yeah, yeah once upon a time. Yeah, everyone Nietzsche. had Avrix. I was buying Avrix bootleg at one time, <laughs> man. It just the Avrix tag come off. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Daddy. I love you so much. Oh, with the stars. I forgot that I have mad stars and moons all over my room, too. <laughs> okay. I love you, Daddy. I hope you have an amazing day. Uh, hold on, but Father, let's talk about how you had no food in this refrigerator, though. <laughs> Want to talk about that? I said, let's talk about how there was no food in this refrigerator. Some condiments. <laughs> Yo, so daddy, before I let you go really quickly, so Anari hit me with the, we ain't got no food in this house. We only got ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'm going to call you after the show, though. Nice to meet you, sir. All right. Justin said, nice to meet you. Thank you, sir. Mm. Okay. Uh, I was talking to the mic like I was talking to him, uh... He heard you though. He heard oh, okay, you. Okay, okay, All right. Okay. So Justin Spring is in the building. Can we please talk about this this co ownership of this restaurant yeah, that yeah. is so good? What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about the fact that so Anari and Asaria. So my favorite thing on the whole menu mm -hmm. is the sub. So it's a steak uh, and yeah, cheese yeah, yeah, sub, yeah. but right. it's not really steak nor is it cheese. And it tastes effing amazing. The peppers, the onions, the mushrooms. It's dope. Like, it's good, good. Right. And Anari and Asari's like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I come in the car and they're like, can I get a bite? <laughs> and they tasted it. Right. And I was like, yo, we got to go back. We gotta go back. How how Justin made food that good? I was like, technically Justin wasn't. In the uh, I can't take none of that credit, <laughs> yo. Um, I have to give a shout out to Chef Sadiq, who um, who's our one of our uh, head chefs at the restaurant, um, who's not even vegan, um, but um, he's just a god from Trinidad. He um, mm -hmm. when he came in, he, he you know we all have different ideas, or we get inspired by by seeing you know, other recipes. And uh, one day he was just like, yo, I'm going to make a Philly cheese steak. And that definitely lit up my ears because, you know, for years, you know, I don't really eat beef no more, but, you know, a Philly cheese steak was my go-to. So, yes. uh, well, not Philly cheese steak because I'm in Boston, but I mean, if I went to Philly, of course, but a cheese steak, you know. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing about us. I mean, when you think about um Chanel Remy said it's bomb. Oh yeah, yeah, she know. She know. When you think about um when you think about um just like when you think about vegan food, a lot of times people think tofu. Yes. You know what I mean? But um what we believe in, it's all about the spice. 
really. It's all, it's, you know, and the texture, you know what I mean? So it's, it's really how you season your food. You know what I mean? If you seasoned your food, your plants, like, Yo. like your meats do, you won't even, you won't, you won't even taste the difference. Yo, this is so, this is the best thing I ever, yo, let me tell you. When he talking about seasoning, this thing seasoned, right? And I told Chef so-and-so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, I told him, I was like, listen, I want it, because the first time I ever had it, it right. was burnt. Like, the meat was burnt, oh, the yeah. onions was burnt, the peppers that's was, like, it was burnt and slimy. Was he there? Yeah, he okay. made it. Oh, wow. And yeah, he like he's a well he's a well done guy. Sometimes he he he'd be thinking he's cooking for himself. No, but that's but, uh, okay. That's the way I needed it though. Hold on, but this is a close up. And so the second time I went, somebody else made it, and it wasn't well done. Right. And I was like, nah, I need chef to make it. I burn my stuff. Oh, okay. You like that I'm a too? Well done. Yeah, me too. too. Me too. Me yes. too. Elephant's got to be well done. Um, yeah. No, I mean. That's the you know that's the tricky part you know is making sure we have that consistency when he's not there you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, and so you know it, it's it's cool to hear all these like great compliments but we still have a long way to go y'all y'all doing it though y'all yeah. absolutely doing it so this is one of the plates that he made for us this is macaroni and cheese oh, yeah. uh, that is fried um, no that's that's some I don't know yeah you gotta go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so macaroni and cheese, collard greens, Haitian potato salad, which is made with beets. Right. Um, you and I hate beets, and it's absolutely amazing. And this is supposed to be barbecue chicken, but instead of barbecue chicken, mushrooms. it's mushroom. Yeah. Yo, oh, actually, let me see that picture. It may be jackfruit. Hold on. Oh, yeah, those are the mushrooms. Yes. Yeah. So, yo, I went ahead and I got the sub with the mushrooms. Fried mushrooms. Wait, 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 what do you mean go talk? I bought everything off the menu. Oh, then you put the mushrooms into the sub? No, I didn't put the mushrooms. But you, just, you asked mean, them to put the mushrooms in no, there? No, some of they told me the mushrooms was good. Right. And so I got the mushrooms and I got the sub. I didn't mix it together. Okay, gotcha. Okay. 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 But maybe let me. That may be. That may be. Yeah, that may be. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna maybe try it with the burgers. Put the really? Mushroom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But All go right. ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No worries. Um. I don't, my mouth is watering yeah. and I'm super hungry and I'm thinking about, <laughs> I hope y'all are open. You were talking about the mushrooms air. and the Oh, so I got shoes. the mushrooms and I was like, no, nah, he had tasted it. It's like fried chicken. He was like, but you said like fried chicken. So it's not really fried chicken. What is it? I was like, just taste it. Mind you, and I already hate mushrooms. Right. And so he was like, yo, this, this is a problem. He was like, I'm eating mushrooms, mom. Like I'm eating mushrooms. Yeah. I was like, exactly. He was like, what else, the, what else they got on the menu? <laughs> So even I say all that to say, even if you're not a vegan person, even right. if you don't, it's food, it's, yeah, it's food, it's vegetables. Um, it's, can I say something real quick? You can say whatever you want to say. We're, so we get it twisted sometimes when we think about traditional soul food. Um, we think about like, when you think about the movie soul food, you got the, you know, the mac and cheese and, uh, the hog mole or the you know all the all the pork and stuff right so that's not that's not that wasn't our soul food we we were plant based eaters mm -hmm. think about it when you think about african cuisine yeah. today it's still a hearty plant based yeah. but i'm talking about you know american you know soul food a lot of it was from the garden and we would only have those those meats on special occasions, you know what I mean? They would have scrapped. But most of the time, yeah, well, most of the time the meats seasoned the plant, I mean, seasoned the plant-based foods, you know, so the spinaches, cabbage, like, so we, we were born to, to, to eat plants. I'm not a full-time vegan myself, but I definitely don't eat meat every day, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's just not, I, I don't, any, I'm not, anyone that does that, that's totally fine. That's mm -hmm. how I was conditioned growing up too. But like it just ain't good for you. It, it you know you don't know where every, where every where, where everything comes from. You mm -hmm. know what I mean. So mm -hmm. like you ever see like your emotions change sometimes after you know eating bad for a while. You know what I mean. You're a different person. You, mm -hmm. And then you know you detox. You you, you hold. You feel better, right? Um, 
but yeah, I just wanted to, I, I try to remind, I mean, there's a lot of history to it. Like, uh, you know, I, I, even growing up, like my grandma, you know, had a garden, my aunts had a garden, you know what I mean? It was all about, about the plant-based life. But, um, the, I think a reason why people love us is because, um, if you are vegan, we kind of bring them back. A lot of, a lot of people that love us didn't, weren't always vegan, right? And we can kind of bring them back to that steak and cheese. We can bring them back to having a burger, right? A burger that's really made out of beets, really. Hold on, what? Yeah, you didn't know that, huh? Your, your burger is made out of beets? Yeah, it was plant. It's all protein. So, like, okay, even, even, so I don't know if you've seen it in my videos. So, the, the, the one that I created is called the Big Sug Burger. And that's the one with the macaroni and cheese. Yeah, on that's it? named after Big Sug from Gangstar Foundation. But, um, but yeah, when you when you're actually, uh, I, I don't ever jump on the on the on the. I can't take any responsibility of of the tasteness. I just watch. Um, but when you are grilling the Impossible Burger, it bleeds, but it ain't blood. Oh, cause it's beef. There you go. But it's mixed with other things too. But like, I'm telling you right. That's now, mad dope. I didn't even think about that. I'm telling you right now, we make the one of the best burgers in the city. I've been to other places that. You know that use Impossible Burger, and you just I tried it, Justin, at home. It don't work. Like I will never buy Impossible meat. Again. No, you you have to season it. You have to do yeah. Yeah, I, you have yeah. to. No, I did that too. I bought Beyond Burger actually, and it didn't work for me either. But um, but what we do because we have a um we have a mantra: spice is life, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about this, all about the season, all about you know um. And we and we 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 pick a lot of our spices. Um, what was your your daughter saying? Yes, this house is full of ingredients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got ingredients from all over the world, all, all from all over the diaspora. You know what I mean? We try to, you know, we also have um, my, Anari, my son. Yeah, talking about the house doesn't have food; it just has ingredients. Oh, ingredients! It was just not, okay. My bad. Um, I like I like that boy. You know, I you know I love that kid. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you come, I mean, we're really a lot of our food is comfort food. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like I was saying before, oh yeah, they got cheesecake, uh, not a red uh, velvet cake, a pistachio cake. The pistachio, pistachio cake. cake was amazing. Well, now, um, now that Oko's there now, um, who's another good friend of mine, I, I saw her talents and I was just like, yo, you got to come rock, rock with us. Oko kind of came in and just elevated a lot of our our, our desserts mm -hmm. so now we had a pistachio cake that was just looked a little boring you know what i mean but it was still good she comes in and uses her magic wand and now we have lavender i won't mess it up i hope she ain't listening lavender um cream frosting and it's actually lavender you know what really? i mean and um it's beautiful it, it's it's just it just took the pistachio, the pistachio cake's got it got its own like you know you know fan base you know what i mean so people come for the certain things some people don't even try nothing else you know what i mean i'm like yo try the burger you know we got tacos too so like a lot of times vegans come you know a lot of vegans that are full-time vegans come to, to us because it's like a their cheat day you mm -hmm. know what i mean they're not cheating they're not eating meat but we bring them back to that comfort you know what i mean and i I think that's um, I think that's where we stand out a little bit. A now, lot of it. Now I'm when you seeing, think about oh, vegan, you think about like a whole bunch of you about to eat a whole bunch of lettuce and salads and oh, this. Yeah. It's like it's food. Right. It's. But I was gonna say a lot of a lot of our um, a lot of other restaurants. I'm, I'm starting to see and now having Philly cheesesteaks and they ain't the same now. Mean, chicken, you know what I mean? And that, that's cool. You know what I mean? They got more money than us. We're gonna catch up to them. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the corporation, the vegan corporations mm -hmm. that are out here. But um, but the what 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 stands out from from us and them is is the rhythm. You know what I mean? We all got, you know, my history is music. You know what I mean? Uh, my partners, it's not, it's more than one. Um, but um, we all have a music background, and so how'd you get into this, Justin? Because we know yeah. you for like yeah the music. We know like this is this is what. We know you for so. How'd you fall into food? How you? I'm an entrepreneur first, and I, I haven't always mm -hmm. been a good. I haven't always been a good one, you know. Um, but that's why you gotta keep, keep going, doing what you, you gotta. 
you know, you got to practice more. And that's just what I did. I just kept on practicing. Um, the, how I got introduced to the restaurant, because they were already in business um, as a food truck. And the crazy thing about it is um, before they moved in, before we moved into the location we're in, um, I, rem- I used to drive Uber at night, late at night. I would do my hustle during the day and then at nighttime from like nine to like four in the morning, I would do Uber. And there was this one restaurant that would stay open to like three or three o'clock in the morning. Mm. And it was the restaurant before Rhythm Raps. So I was always the going. Asian one? No, it was called like, um, that's next door. It was, I forget what it was called, but it would be open till three in the morning. They sold like subs and, mm-hmm. you know, like breakfast. They served breakfast too at night. Um, I forget what it was called, but obviously they went out of business and then Ribbon Raps moved in. So when I first, so I came in, they were my client. So I remember walked in the first day. I was, you know, what I was saying to you before is about the rhythm when I walked in. The music, I was, I felt the vibes. I was like, oh, okay, because you know, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, I'm a hip hop head. I'm a music head, really. So, get into where I got into to become a partner is, um, you know, I came in doing just marketing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so, it got to a point where, um, but in, let me go. I'm sorry. If I'm confusing people. So when I first walked in the place, I was blown away because it was this spot that I used to go to late at night. You know what I mean? And now I'm going to be working with this spot. It, to me, it just I felt that connection. So it started as a client. And then over time, um, I turned it into more of a, a an equity situation. So, and you know how to make you know how to make uh, relationships work. Yeah, I'm still learning. So I actually went to school for restaurant management um, and hotel. I did an internship at Walt Disney. I've Who li- are you? I lived many lives. So when I was 19, I, I worked at Disney World on a college program for like, mm-hmm. for like six months. I worked at the the, Gra- you, y'all, I met, the Grand I've Floridian. Known Justin for 10 years, <laughs> never knew this. <laughs> yeah, I, I worked for Mickey Mouse for a little bit. But yeah, I, I so when I was when I went to school, I was studying um, hospitality management, hotel mm-hmm. and restaurant, because that's what I wanted to do. For, I don't know, uh, you know, I thought that's what I thought I wanted to do at the time. Uh, but then when I was in Florida, I started DJing, and you know, uh, I just I came back to Boston, and then that's when I got to the club scene, mm-hmm. and I was like my start of my music days. But um, but yeah, so. Going back into you know how I became a partner, I just I just believe I saw the vision. I I I love the food, you know what I mean. I saw that veganism was was not just a trend; it was actually becoming a lifestyle um, for a lot of people. And you know, this was before the Burger Kings were invested right, into Impossible me. Burger, not mm-hmm. Dunkin' Donuts. This was before all that. So my whole thing was like, how can I come in, do what I do, bring all my talents in, bring other talent in, which which I have done, um, you know, in our rap, we call it the rap family, mm-hmm. you know? So I've helped, you know, invest into that too. But I also, um, you know, wanted to make sure that we engage the community. You know, we're in Austin, but we wanted to make sure we engage um, the Roxbury, the Dorchesters, the Mattapans, because there's not a lot of healthy options out and there. And you guys um, sponsored the workers at the reggie lewis center with food well i can we we provided the food but frank from elevate boston who's Mm -hmm. who's a good friend of mine who fell in love with what we're doing too was like man i'm just gonna try to get raise some money and then anytime i'm gonna buy some food from y'all and then we'll deliver it you know what i mean so we actually got a video with his um with elevate boston on youtube talking about some of the, the community engagement. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. something we want to continue to do. We want to make sure that, um, so yeah, even during the pandemic, um, so yeah, I won't surprise you with your vaccination joke earlier that you were, uh, bring that project up, but. Um, so hold on, I'm not a vaccine <laughs> shamer though. Oh, okay. Whatever you choose to do is your choice. Right, right, right. But right. for me in my house. Right, right, right. We choose not to, but I, I'm not. I respect that. Yeah, like. If you yeah. want to get the vaccine, I want you to get access to it. The Black Bo- Boston COVID Coalition, if you go to the website, you can right. go ahead and sign up. 
sign your cousins up, sign your aunties up. If you don't have a way to get a vaccine right now, right. you can go to the Black Boston COVID Coalition on their news and updates portion. And if you scroll down and you see the vaccine bottle with the needle, you can sign up with your name, right. your number, That's my problem. and somebody will call you and let you know that you can, you know. That's my problem is the needle part. But uh, I'm gonna get. Grandma told me I gotta get the needle. I mean, get the vaccination. I'll probably do it for her. But I'm just kind of. I'm like that dude that when there's a buffet line or when you know when you're at the family line, I wait for everybody to get their food. And I don't like to just. I just wait. You know what I mean? I, I I'm comfortable just going, seeing how everything else works out. If anybody like you know the food is good, you know. What I mean? <laughs> Who you made know, the macaroni? I, yeah, I'm gonna show. Let everyone test it out first. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, it's been a blessing um, to to be involved. When, when I was just saying, my vision when I when I, I it was more like, how can we duplicate this? How can we duplicate? I know because I want y'all to y'all don't deliver to my house. We're work, no, we're working. That's gonna change in the next month or two. Uh, we're working on that. So I gotta wait another month or two. No, we're gonna try to put the food truck in certain areas mm -hmm. in the hood where Uber Eats can come to the truck. And I can still get what I order yeah. off the we'll truck. Still, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And we'll still do, we, have the, we won't have the full menu, but we'll have the Philly cheesesteak. I definitely love. Okay. And the mushrooms? Yeah, yeah. We have a fryer on the food truck. Okay. All, all right. Yeah, as long yeah, as yeah. I can get my favorite. Chef won't be on the truck. But um, but yeah, we're going to work that out. Well, you know, I'm still learning. You know what I mean? Y'all need a day where Chef can train everybody to do well done. Yeah, can yeah. we do that, please? Can I advocate for that? Can you tell um can you tell him that? Tell him tell him that for me. Tell Chef that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. Yeah. We we have conversations about that. But tell us, okay, so that's one aspect of your life because Justin is a Taurus. Are you a May Taurus or an April Taurus? I'm, a, I'm April. You're an April Taurus? Yeah, what's the, what's the difference? I don't a lot. Yeah. A lot. Y'all are a completely different breed from May Taurus. Really? What do, is there any things that we are compatible or no, we're cool. Like we're yeah. still the same. We're still Taurus, but y'all yeah, yeah. just are y'all. I don't just really different. know. I believe in it, but I don't really know like the whole I, when people tell me stuff like, okay, that's that's cool, but I don't really look into it that much. I know we're stubborn, right? Are you stubborn? Yeah, I'm big time. That's stubborn. my first, middle, yeah. and last name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and tell, my surname. You can't tell me nothing. I'm in my own world. But um You know what I do hate about being a Taurus? I don't like it be sometimes though. Yeah, not just being hard headed, but like having to find out it's hot. It's hot. Let me hold on, but I need to tell if it's hot. Because your level of hot and my level of hot might be two different exactly. hot. Like, damn, I burned myself. I told you it was hot. Like yeah. I hate that we have to learn the hard way. Yeah, and the worst ones with relationships. Trying. I am not claiming that in the name of nobody. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I'm not claiming that. When you when people warn you of someone, you're like, ah, well, you know, let me see. No, I'm not claiming it, Justin. You can <laughs> claim that one on your own. We're gonna go ahead and pay these bills when we come back. We're gonna talk a little bit more with Justin and Basquiat. You were supposed to pay bills 15 minutes ago. I know. You? We okay. paid no, you went to the bathroom. I paid oh, okay. bills. That's right, that's right. See, you done forgot. Why y'all call me <laughs> out like that? Yeah, talk about bathroom breaks. I am Tay Laundre. Working, waking up with Tay Laundre has absolutely nothing to do with the time of day we link up. But about waking up your third eye with unorthodox conversations leading to universal consciousness. Playing the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 Are you tired of renting and need more of your own space? Are you getting stressful letters or calls from the bank? Does your home require expensive repairs and you just don't have the funds to fix them? Regardless of whether you want to buy or sell, Taylor Andre of Thumbprint Realty is here to help. From saving your home from foreclosure to walking you through the process of becoming a first-time homeowner, Taylor makes real estate easy. With your best interests at heart, knowledge of the market, and a passion for people, Taylor is dedicated and motivated to serve you. Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre, and I am determined and dedicated in assisting you in all of your real estate needs. Give me a call at 617-459-0041. Again, that number is 617-459-0041. Or you can email me at T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E at thumbprintrealty.com. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Hey, uh... Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. 
That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path, because when you talk, they hear you. Learn more at underagedrinking.samsa.gov. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. Radio. New England's number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 What's up, everybody? This is James Jimmy Hills, host of Java with Jimmy on Spark FM Online. Make sure you tune in every Monday and every Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Also, follow Java with Jimmy on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And don't forget to go to Spark FM Online and download the app. Listen to Spark FM Online 24-7. Igniting the airwaves. Spark FM. <laughs> You are now listening to Spark, 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 Spark FM. FM, FM. Good rise, good afternoon, good evening, good night. We're back with Justin Springer. And I think I know how to say it correctly. Bastia. I said it right. And then practicing. Yes, practice makes perfect. I don't think butcher people name on purpose. And so since we have Justin and we have Kidnapped, and before we jump in um, to talking about what's going on as far as a Museum of Fine Arts located in Boston. Yeah, who wants tickets? Who wants tickets? Who wants, we should give out tickets in the week. Well, told people to give, give us a call at 617 They want to the promotion to tomorrow and talk about it. That's fine, too. Can we for the week? Can we do it for the week and give out two tickets Not throughout day. the week? Maybe. Not a day. Oh, the two yeah, tickets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, I said we could do four. We can do four? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one ticket a day. I mean, whichever way you want to distribute it. Okay, so he said do whatever you want to do, but you got four tickets. Figure that out. So if you guys want tickets, um, make sure inbox me. Yeah, not me. <laughs> Damn, Justin, don't put it all on me. So really quickly, I did want to run through um, – Two stories, or a couple stories. So first and foremost, I am super annoyed that China sees 7,221 human penises in a container from Nigeria. And so the Chinese customs officers made the world's biggest seizure of human organs in the history of 7,221 penises of African origin hidden in a refrigerated freight container um, and it was named plant meats. They said that these particular penises were, so you know the black market is a real thing, right? Uh, I guess. <laughs> so you, the black market is a real thing. Okay, and I, people I, come I, to this organ. Okay, I didn't know about that, no. I mean, I knew about like DVs and stuff like that. No, they, they, it's a whole lot more. And so, it, of African origins, they were hidden in a refrigerated freight container. Um, acting on information from an anonymous, anonymous informer, Chinese officers found the organs in 36 different boxes labeled, labeled as plantains. Um, and the Chinese General Administration of Customs spokesman, Li Wu, said an increasingly large number of armed groups in Africa use organ trafficking to finance themselves, making this seizure and others predictable. These organs are common commodities now, but they were certainly harvested in unsanitary conditions or contaminated at some point. So we can't let them out of the out of our tiny market. But pause. Even if it wasn't unsanitary, even if they weren't um, what was the word that they said? Contaminated at some point. Where the hell are they being sold? Who's buying a black penis that's not a dildo, that is, is actual meat? What are you doing with that? Uh, of course, of course not. I just, I don't know. so he says the organs were shipped from Lagos in Nigeria, but may have only transited through that country and could possibly originate from other areas in Africa, 
We know that penises from Liberia and Sudan fetch a higher price than those from other African war zones, but can't presume of the origin before the end of the investigation. The Chinese General Administration of Customs also said similar seizures may become more and more common over the next few years, not days, not months, but years, as armed groups in Africa turn to organ trafficking to finance their military operations. Human penises were seized in nine cases in 2002, but today's crime represents more than four times that all they seized by customs over the past 18 years. So, so describing the organs value as high as the illegal drugs, he said the specimens of seizure usually fetch around $160,000 per penis on the black market. Making over 7,000 of these pieces, valuing more than $1.15 billion. <laughs> uh, Yo, like, and to me, I'm like, who are these 7,000 black men that are walking around and they're going, like, I know you can't live after you have. Was it they sold it or was it? No, China just said it. They're contaminated, we can't put them on the market. But even if they are contaminated, who's buying penises? And this ain't no freaky product. Like, these are husbands, brothers, cousins, nephews, sons. We don't know that they're dead people. We know it's a war zone. A what? Oh, cuisine. What do you call it? Uh, a kidney? No, I'm fine. Just kidding. Quiz, quizzing. Is that what you say? Quizzing? You try to correct me. I actually have heard it as like, we need to see. Quizzing. Quiz. quiz. Why would it be quiz? I don't know. Is that right? 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 Once again, Cuisine. Maybe it is. That's what I don't know. I don't, I don't know what anything is. about these. <laughs> I don't know where you find these stories. Though. Lord. Okay, so as far as I find the stories that don't get me the media, because this is a long time to find that. I respect it. So countries raised to vaccine against COVID 19, yet Haiti has not given out one dose. The reason why this makes me so excited is because Haiti has one of the lowest rates of COVID. Listen, if I was in any other country, we're not giving you We're not giving you at all. So let me give you the numbers. So um, originally, any of was going to give a 10,000 um, vaccines. And they were like, we don't even have any good sort of vaccines. I recently learned that this part of Haiti that doesn't even have electricity 24 hours a day. And so they were like, listen, it doesn't make any sense for us to take them. So keep them until we have somewhere to store them, we have the security to store them. And then at a later date, we can think about taking them. And so Latin America and the Korean continue to be quote unquote a hot spot for the COVID 19 infections, accounting uh, for more than half of all the local deaths reported over the last week. But Haiti has been spared the worst of the pandemic. There have been less than 300 reported deaths in Haiti uh, and 12,840 confirmed infections. In comparison to the Dominican Republic, which is located on the same island, with roughly the same number of people has registered 3,369 deaths with 255,000 infections. The low number of cases despite the overall poor compliance with wearing a mask, avoiding large gatherings. They just had a carnival in a weekly mass of anti-government protests as surprise doctors. So some retrieved low numbers of reported infection to the country's fairly young population, more than half are under 25, 
no one is completely sure of the reason why the pandemic hasn't been crazy and hate. You want to, let me tell you why. It's because of the mass of people. That's <laughs> So Haitians have so is I could be pronouncing it wrong. Not sexy oil, and it's like the nastiest freaking oil on earth. But it giving it here, cures AIDS, cures cancer. Like, like you drink it, and it's like a thick castor oil type of situation. It's the nastiest thing. But then when you think about like the way that Haitians eat and their remedies and their ancestors, that's why they get it. The rest of the world we perish. But the way Haiti set up, me and my house. Um, what about really, areas have low COVID like countries? Do you know? I have not done regular things. Because I've seen videos in China, but they're back to regular life over there. Concerts and everything. Really? Yeah. And that's where it started, right? That's what I say. We, we don't know. We don't know the truth. Justin, we have speculations, but my speculations have nothing to do with picking back. Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. It's okay. man-made. Oh, you just the Americans are the theorists? No, I'm just, I'm just logic. And you like to say it's man-made? Yeah. I wonder how many other people that think logically think the same thing. Uh, Boeing just invested two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a company that helped formerly incarcerated persons gain tech skills. I love this. Uh, Mark is is the CEO of uh, Flick Shop, and it just received two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars for Boeing's desire to want to invest in the community while supporting businesses wanting to end mass incarceration. A book was touched by incarceration itself. He hopes that more people, more corporate partners like Boeing, will want to get involved in supporting the underserved populations to thrive after incarceration. And so I'm super excited for this because we always talk about, you know, formerly incarcerated persons and the things that they did and they got what they deserve. But it doesn't matter what the crime was, if you served your time and you came out. After you are labeled by the United States government a felon, you can't get that. So you can't go to school on on like grants that everybody else gets. And so when you think about our communities that are over police, that are sent to jail for municipal things, we only have what 17 states in the United States that currently does not treat um, marijuana as a Type one felony class A, this and that. And so I want to see more of these type of partnerships. And so I'm seeing it into existence. Um, we touched on this last week, but I want to remind you because this is so, I'm learning the importance of land, the importance of what that 48 years of real could have done for our ancestors and who we could be today had we received our 48 years of real. And when reparations comes, I don't want the money. Give me the land, give me the fuel. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I definitely have the money. So the descendants of a black family who owned a thriving resort on Valley Manhattan Beach will have their land return. Now, can we give the land back to the Native Americans, the First Nation, because that's really who we flow from? Um, we turned to them after they were forced out by racist policies a century ago, and it's now worth at least seventy-two million dollars. Charles and Willow, who is a black couple, moved to California from New Mexico with their son Harvey. In nineteen twelve, they bought the land on Manhattan Beach, opened a resort along a then undeveloped stretch of land. The resort was one of the first to welcome African Americans to the coast to swim, eat, dance, and sunbathe. In 1924, a city official seized two dozen properties through eminent domain and said that a park would be built. The Bruce's fought the city in court, lost, and left the area. The proposed park was not built for decades. On Friday, LA County officials announced that the land was being returned to the Bruce's descendants, and the families are have yet to say what they will do with the land, but it is worth more than $72 million. So they open a black resort, black people come, and eat, and dance, and then suddenly, once again, they're having to be the government's policies. 
And so that would be yes. Yeah. Amazing, amazing is just what I would do The Pentagon is trying to reveal a micro trip, a micro trip that sends COVID-19 in your body before you show symptoms in a filter that extracts the virus from your body. Listen, I need you to listen to your ears because sometimes you don't hear what I'm saying. So the Pentagon scientists revealed a micro chip. The Pentagon secretive unit are researching viruses in developing pandemic cures. They work at Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, aka DARPA, and other Pentagon laboratories. In my Dexter's uh, laboratory voice. Uh, doctors team saw COVID 19 infection. 1,271 on board of the USS Theodore Roosevelt as the virus spread unchecked. In response, they have developed a microchip to detect asymptomatic COVID in a big print outbreak. The chip is inserted below the skin and triggers sensors if COVID infects, infects the body. Hold on, backwards. Hold on. Thank you for letting me know. That fixed it. You can hear me now. We good? My mic sound nice. And so they are working on a vaccine that would work against all coronaviruses because coronaviruses have been along for a long time. If you look at a Lysol can from 1995 that expired, it will say a coronavirus because Corona-19 is just one aspect of coronaviruses. Uh, the team also successfully manufactured antibodies against the Spanish flu, which quote unquote is no longer existence. We shall see if it comes back to the forefront. Um, a 911 dispatcher who is 33 years old is arrested and fired for refusing to return $1.2 million that was mistakenly deposited into her account by Charles Schwab and using it to buy a house and a car. Y'all put that in my account. <laughs> That's your fault. Well, I got to give it back. I wouldn't have gave it back either, but she lost her job as a 911 dispatcher. Her name is Kellen Spadoni. She's actually black and she's charged with theft valued over $25,000. It's not theft. She's charged with bank fraud, which means she'll never be able to have a bank account again. Illegal transmissions of monetary funds, which means she'll never have a bank account again. Um, she was accused of refusing to return more than 1.2 million that had been mistakenly deposited into her brokerage account. When Charles Schwab tried to reclaim the funds, the monies were gone. Uh, she supposedly transferred $82, uh, use the additional funds to buy a house in a 2021 Hyundai Genesis, which is the same. That's the same car that, um, uh, I was going to say Spike Lee golf swing Tiger Woods just recently got in a car accident with, um, Charles Schwab sued her in federal court after failing to reach her. And what's really surprising is I'm surprised the judge even let her be sued. Y'all put it in there. And I, I want to know how, well, this is my ignorance speaking, right? So if you put something in my brokerage account and then you take out, you can you, you just don't have authority to go in and out of my brokerage like that. But that's my ignorance. I'll ask um, Paul Mary next time he's on air. So we, I can get a better understanding. Because if you put that in my account and that's your fault, it's mine. Finders keepers, right? Uh, protests erupt after police shoot and kill a 20-year-old Dante Wright after a traffic stop in Minnesota. So they shot and killed the 20-year-old Dante Wright after a traffic stop um, Sunday in Brooklyn Center, Minneapolis. The shooting feud protests in the area all the way into this rising. Details about the shooting are still being gathered, but as soon as we have enough information, I absolutely will update you. Um, Wall Street's oldest Black-owned investment bank makes history, and I'm excited. Um, Baylock Van LLC, Wall Street's oldest continually operating black owned investment bank firm has gained more success in the last year as more American companies and municipalities recognize the value of doing business with diverse business enterprises, 
also known as DBEs, especially when it comes to black owned businesses within the financial service industry. And there's not too many of us. And so shout out to Baylock Van LLC. Um, really quickly, I want to run through. So the Virginia cop, I know you saw the video of the, um, the serviceman who recently purchased a new vehicle who got pepper sprayed. The reason why that video, like I really, when he was on laying on the ground in the middle of being handcuffed and started crying, yo, my heart dropped. Cause at no point in time did he raise his voice the whole time he asking like, how, why are you doing this? Like, what is the problem? What is wrong? How can I help you? At no time was that man addressed. At no time did they give him the information. So the cop was fired, period. Yo, and there's one point, um, I don't know if you got, I love memes. Like, I be here for the comments. And so the original officer who pulled him over, he looked like a rookie. He looked scared as hell. Like, he didn't know what he was doing when the aggressive officer pulled up and, like, took took the power Authority, like took authority over everything. The other guy was like, hold on. Like, you can see it on his face. He was like, why is my gun out? If somebody made a meme on it, like at this moment, he realized where he effed up. Cause it, I'm not sure, but I'm, I really, I want to see more. I, I want him to sue. I want this man to be like clear. The truth of the matter is he going to go to another police department and regardless of the news that's surrounding him until we put into place, um, what is it? Immunity. Um, I can't think of the word right now, but until we do a better job at making sure that at any point in time, if you don't do this thing or you get fired for a certain reason, that follows you everywhere. And so right now, if Taylor Andre licensed real estate agent in Massachusetts and Georgia does anything out of ethical or fiduciary code where I'm not supposed to, and I lose my license, God forbid that I'm not speaking it, just an example. I can no longer then get a license in any other state, but yet a police officer who has a thought, and I only sell houses. That's all I do. I say, that's it. Like I just sell the house, but yet a officer with a gun and a badge and authority can come out here and leave one job and go to another and not be held accountable for his or her actions is ridiculous. And it's something, something immunity. And I don't know what it is, but somebody's going to remind me at a later date. And so with all that being said, last but not least, Netflix coded bias documentary uncovers the racial bias in technology. And they specifically talk about like facial recognition software and how the, the, code of the software is biased and basically all black people look alike according to the bias within coding. And so I am a hundred percent a documentarian. I love them. No, a documentarian is someone who makes documentaries. I do not. I just watch them. And so with all that being said, let's bring it back to Justin Springer and let's talk about Basquiat. Getting better. Say it one more time. I mean, I, I'm not a pro, but Basquiat. Basquiat. Yeah. Okay, Basquiat. <laughs> I may be wrong too. Someone probably yeah, I'm about to look it me. up. I'm about to look it up. <laughs> no, nah, we good with that. Um, what do you want to talk about? I want to talk about so. All right, so we have four tickets to give away over the course of the next week uh -huh. for those who want to see Writing the Future, Basquiat, and the Hip Hop Generation. Right. So it's Basquiat and all of his friends. Oh, and let me show me doing that. Now that I know how to say it right, that's what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do that again. One more time? Yeah, for the cameras. Okay. So we are giving away four tickets on the Wake Up With Taylor Andre show for the Writing the Future Basquiat the hip hop generation for him and his friends at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. And so if you are interested in receiving your free ticket, make sure you tune in this week, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Basquiat tickets at Museum of Fine Arts Boston, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Um, I'm super excited to be a part of this. When we get there, what should we expect, Justin? Um, I would say like kind of like a journey to a New York subway, Bronx, you know, Manhattan, Harlem, kind of.
kind of like 30 years back in time mm. when um you know the graffiti was kind of like our hip hop was i mean it's it's part of the five it's one of the elements of hip hop but like the graffiti at one time was the language of a, a lot of people you know what i mean like you could be on a train and you know you'll see someone's mark you know and, and that that spoke something you know what i mean and so i would say you can bring your kids you could bring a date you could uh again go by yourself and you know it, it's just like going back in time but still the work the artwork is still relevant to what we are dealing with today a lot of the work you'll artwork you'll see is around you know gentrification capitalism racism um sexism you know so um it you know it's a it's a it's a beautiful exhibit and if you're a hip-hop head like you gotta go check it out you know what i mean tickets are only 25 dollars um it's just and like, we're giving away four of them on the wake up with taylor and ray show right so don't call me don't call email taylor. me go through taylor mm -hmm. because um this is a spark radio promotion so um um yeah no i thank you for like having given me an opportunity to talk a little bit more Justin, i miss you we haven't seen each other in a long time yeah well, i mean the pandemic too but um i be i see you i see what you're doing and i, I see you i see what i see everything that's going on. i'm proud of you you know what i mean i'm one of your i'm a liker on social media i like a lot of stuff i'm not a hater like some people are like i like stuff when people are putting good good content out there and um but you know we go deeper i know i know your family mm -hmm. you know i gotta come see rain the future you know what i mean um your son um i actually tried to put your other son to work a couple of years ago he did a good job so when you see the taylor andre posters all over the city that was me and her son yes you know what i mean and you know he's a big man now like he does not that was like a yeah. year and a half ago right i seen him i seen him that day i brought y'all food Oh yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. The door. I was like, oh, I wasn't. Even, I didn't get to see you. What's he a was, junior? What's he? What year is he in? Now? He's a senior now. God, I was on a flight back. Your daughter's a freshman. Mm -hmm. Wow, they mm -hmm. just grown so grown. Far. But you did a great job with them. I they're, appreciate They're good. That. They're good people. Like I actually like like <laughs> like them. You know what I mean? Like like I I like I see a lot in both of them, and they both like you're you you've done a great job as a mother, as an entrepreneur, um, and then finding time to to be a voice of truth, you know, if I had flowers on me right now, I'll give them to you right now. You know, Aww, thank you. I accept. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm Where's happy the restaurant. Here. What's the address? They um, asking about the food. Oh, 1096, um, Commonwealth Ave. It's in Austin near BU right across from the star market. Um, it's we, where that weird intersection is like right. it's a, that, but we got Uber eats and stuff depending on where you live. And, um, we have our, actually, it's better to order delivery, try the delivery that's to connect it to our website. Um, you may, they may, it's called deliver. They may be able to come to your area. They're, they're, they're new. Yeah. And they're, they, um, you know, for us, it's a better partnership because they mm -hmm. don't rape us like the, the Uber Eats. I heard yeah, it's yeah, like thirty yeah. percent or I, something like that. It's crazy. Talk, I don't want to talk about it, but um, Lord. no comment. But um, I'm happy. To, we're happy to have the service. It's actually kept a lot of businesses going. You know, Amen. it's just that you gotta, you know, you gotta pay what you owe. Yeah, but you know, you know, outside of that, um, I also have a marketing business and I'm working some really, some really good projects right now. Out um, the box. Yeah, outside. Agency outside the box. Yeah, it's cool. Everyone <laughs> says that. Yeah. OTB. Um, and then I also um, um, co oversee um, the Fairmount Innovation Lab, which you need. We're in a new, we're in the old Dorchester's Savings Bank in Upham's oh, Corner. Guys moved. Yeah, so we we actually, uh, we're in an old bank. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I mean, I can say it. we're trying to actually buy the building. Um, hopefully, Amen. hopefully, we'll, um, not with my money, but um, <laughs> hopefully, we'll, um, be accepted the proposal that we we submitted mm -hmm. um and then if we if that does happen i would like to bring the team in and yes. have another conversation yes. so let's manifest that that we're able to have the artist
a host too from time to time, mm-hmm. but um, more of a producer. We're going to produce our first podcast interviewing entrepreneurs and creatives, and we would love to have you on. Uh, I would love that. Yeah, we would love to have a Honor, conversation yes. on your journey, you know, and on uh, and the you know sacrifices that you made. You know what I mean? Um, but now you're in you're you know, you're you're also succeeding in entrepreneurship and real estate. You know what I mean? Teaching people um, how to fix their credit, and how to build their credit. Mm-hmm. You know, or just to think about home home ownership. A lot of times, it's the fear of wanting to take that next leap because you're so comfortable where you are mm-hmm. but now we need to start buying and you know we need to protect the people that are that are our elders who are being forced to sold too mm-hmm. you know what i mean so that's mm-hmm. another story um but uh, i'm proud of you, you i know? wish i could get these elders to partner with these young people right and and maybe have- there can be a, a, a if you're gonna sell, you sell to the right person, you know. So yeah, I legally have no idea what you're talking about right now. Huh? You what? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> gotcha. I have no idea what you're talking about, Justin. Well, I, no I, clue. I lost you. But we'll we'll talk more about that after because I've there's there's many there's many um when you think about intergener intergenerational communication, there's a there's a gap. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, I agree with you. You know, I think there should be more um, of a bridge, you know. I mean, we may, some people may have a bridge with your own grandmother, but a lot of times when you're working in it, if you're an entrepreneur, you don't really, sometimes for me, I, I struggle because I don't know who came before me. Yeah. You know, I don't know who to go to. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Um, the village, we don't have the village like we used to have the village. Right, right. But That's got, truly what it is at the end always, of the day. You can always build it, though. You can always build one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it just starts with yourself first. Ashe, Ashe. And so the name of the restaurant is Rhythm in Wraps. And you could go to the website. You can see if you can Uber Eats. If you work in the downtownish area, you might be able to get you some Uber Eats, unfortunately, where I live. I got to go to the restaurant, but I am willing to travel. I do travel and the food is absolutely amazing. I showed you pictures earlier, but if you go to the Instagram page, you will see everybody else raving about how great the food is. Do not forget. We are giving away tickets for the rest of the entire week. If you are trying to go see the writing, the future Basquiat, (laughs) I think I said it right. The Writing the Future, Basquiat, and the Hip Hop Generation at the Museum of Fine Arts. We are giving away tickets. T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E. Everything Taylor Andre. We'll be giving them away on the show. You can give us a call at 617-272-3387. We've come all the way to the top of the hour. I want to thank you, Justin. I love you. I appreciate you. I I see what you're doing out here and what you have been doing, what you continue to do. Um, wait, Wait till what comes next. You're like the energizer, buddy. Your ass never stops. Yeah, but I need a nap. I I bet you do. I love you. I appreciate you. I hope you all have an amazing day. Tell them one more time, Justin, where we get the restaurant. 1096 Commonwealth Ave, Austin, Mass, Rhythm and Raps. You can find us online, rhythmandraps.com. IG, Twitter, Facebook, the same. Um, Yeah, if you're looking to partner up, you know, hit me up. Mm -hmm. yes 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 i thank you i love you i appreciate you all everything taylor andre t-a-y-l-a-a-n-d-r-e don't forget go on the website you can now buy the book at i was supposed to say on spark fm (laughs) you can now buy the book at walmart.com you can now buy the book on amazon and of course you can buy it on the book patch yeah i got some in the car Uh, well actually there's one right here you see it on the on the windowsill oh how much is it? For you, Justin? No, don't tell me no for me. How much? Yes, for you. Everything you do for the people, I absolutely can gift you a book, Justin. Just well, feed me. Okay. <laughs> you know, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. No problem. Thank you. You don't know me. Um, everything Taylor Andre, T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E dot com. You are now listening to Spark, Spark, Spark. Spark FM. FM.